Can you tell us a little bit about the history and the evolution of victims' rights? Well, the best way to think about victims' rights in the context of Australia is to, to divide it up into decades. So essentially, in the 1960s, the concept that had been uh, proposed by Margaret Fry, an English magistrate, uh, for the introduction of state-funded victim compensation was embraced, and that became a primary focus of the delivery of victim services. Um, so here, for example, in South Australia in 1969, we became the third state of Australia to introduce a state-funded victim compensation scheme. Uh, in addition to that, towards the late 60s, they began to see the growth of interest in research and in particular um, national victim surveys. And so we started to learn a little bit more about who is victimised, uh, where victimisation happens, how people respond or react to victimisation. And those national surveys have continued here in Australia. They became the Crime and Safety Survey, and it's variously been parts of different surveys that the ABS has conducted. That's the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Yep. In the 1970s, we saw the growth of actual victim services. So on the crest of the wave of the civil rights um, agitation uh, against the Vietnam Wars or um, proclaiming uh, human rights, uh, we saw the um, evolving women's movement. And in particular, uh, they began to draw attention to the need for services for victims of sexual assault, uh, domestic violence, and, um, and later uh, children. Uh, for example, in the era of children, we saw a fundamental shift away from looking at child abuse but purely from a medical model to looking at it from a more social welfare type model. Uh, here in South Australia, indicative of, uh, of the outcomes to improve the circumstances of victims was the establishment of a rape and sexual assault service, um, as well as uh, the uh, development of women's shelters. Mm -hmm. uh, that decade ended with uh, the predominantly the mothers of murder victims mm -hmm. gathering together uh, under the uh, guidance of a former commissioner of Queensland Police, Ray Whitrod, and establishing what was then called the Victims of Crime Service, today the Victim Support Service, the largest non-government uh, service providing generically for victims of crime uh, here in Australia, mm -hmm. and, and it's based in South Australia still. The 1980s, uh, we saw um, after an inquiry um, here in South Australia, the first inquiry into victims of crime sponsored by a government um, in, in modern times, uh, what before uh, the report of the President's inquiry in the United States and everyone around the world uh, remembers the President's inquiry, but not the fact that South Australia in front was, uh, was at the front of that discussion. But that uh, served as a blueprint for a, a wider debate about victims' rights. And by the mid-1980s, we saw here in South Australia the first declaration on victims' rights introduced by the Attorney General Chris Sumner. And, and he was actively involved as well in the international debate around victims' rights. Uh, that uh, decade closed with a shift uh, in interest, not uh, um, specifically on victims' rights to information, but more so on victims' rights to participate with the introduction of victim impact statements. I described the 1990s as a decade of consolidation. Mm -hmm. um, so there were various research reports that were produced, an evaluation of victim impact statements, for example, reported in 1994. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at the, uh, there was a change between police writing victim impact statements and uh, victims writing their own statements. Uh, we saw a, a, also the decade end in 1999 with the beginning of a review on victims of crime. Uh, commissioned for the purpose of not only a stock take of where we'd reach, but also in uh, mapping out where we'd go in the future in terms of victims' rights, but also victims' assistance. Uh, 2000 became the de decade of reform, and we had to change the government from a Liberal to a Labor government here. Uh, we saw a shift in emphasis um, where many of the debates around victims' rights were um, attached to the law and order uh, debate of, of the Labor government and what most probably is the, the most remarkable to come out of that decade was the expansion of victims participatory rights whether that be uh, to participate in bail proceedings, uh, consultation on um, charge bargaining mm -hmm. or uh, participation in parole hearings as, as examples. Um, and in more recent times, we have seen um, basically a plateau in activity. 
from the point of view of legislative reform. Um, and interestingly, some of the issues that women raised back in the 1970s have regained some prominence, such as uh, domestic violence and child protection um, uh, as sort of primary and specific areas of interest in both government reform, but also activities by people such as the Commissioner for Victims' Rights and mm -hmm. now the Commissioner for Children and the Guardian for Children.